Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. I have a couple of wonderful guests with me here today, uh, Bob and Todd, that are going to chat on a, a highly uh, specialized performance topic. But uh, Todd, why don't you give yourself a quick introduction first? Sure. Yeah, my name is Todd Muirhead. I've been in the VMware Performance Engineering Group for many years. I focus on database performance. Um, yeah, Bob Goldstand. I am with the Strategic Ecosystems and Industry Solutions Business Unit, and I've been with VMware 13, 14 years, uh, and uh, work quite a bit with, with both Todd and Mark. I understand that uh, you've been doing some Oracle work here recently with their OCVS and had some information to share with us. Uh, why don't you share? Yeah, we just completed a pretty exciting project and uh, you know, partnering with Oracle, AMD, and Deloitte, really uh, you know, four tech powerhouses here. And on the OCVS front, you know, we, we have a great multi-cloud story, um, work with, with all of the major hyperscalers, but the challenge with that is that well, how do you differentiate these solutions? And we um, we think that Oracle OCS has a huge differentiation when it comes to enterprise workloads, and with that performance, which is what we wanted to highlight in the, in this paper. We've been running, our customers have been running Oracle successfully for well over twelve years. Is just you know proven, it proves the 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 enterprise class stability of of our platform. So with, with the OCS solution, and, and Todd will be getting into this as well, is, is that they, they are the only hyperscaler that is offering these AMD EPIC processor shapes with our, on, on our platform. There's definite performance advantages, which we'll get into later. And these performance advantages, when it comes to the workloads, really wouldn't be possible unless you were granted full customer control. And with OCVS, Oracle grants the, the, the customer full control and management. And the, why you, you can achieve these, the performance metrics is because you can leverage our best practices. You know, our best practice from, from, from Oracle to SQL Server, which we'll show a, a, as well. So if you don't have full access to the bio setting, the host settings, the VM settings, you can't optimally deploy your your VM onto onto a, a uh, onto a cloud so ha having full customer full customer access is really really a key differentiator here and we wanted to prove this and we, we proved this with a benchmark not only did we benchmark Oracle but we also benchmarked SQL server and and highlighted the, the performance boosts associated with these AMD processes on, on OCBS. And, and one of the reasons we wanted to, to uh, also um, benchmark SQL Server is because we wanted to show that you could you can run any any enterprise workload on 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 OCVS. So it's a good consolidation play. It's it's a good way to engineer your solutions. The white paper has been pretty successful, and having everybody's logo on this technical white paper is is quite a win for all of our, all of the companies. We'll be presenting at Explore, Oracle Cloud World. There's going to be a happy hour, a lot of booth activities. So re really excited about this year's Explore. And here, this kind of outlines the goal of this project. And this goal really was to show parity when, uh, with respect to performance when going from on-prem to the cloud. We wanted to replicate the, the benchmarks that were done several years ago uh, on, on the AMD EPIC processors. So with that, I'd like to just turn it over to Todd. Yeah, so to your point, we, we, we put together some benchmark tests for the OCVS environment to compare them uh, against on-prem. So we had a, a, you know, an AMD Milan host, which has 64 uh, cores uh, per processor. So you get 128 total for two, two processor system which was what we tested in this case. And um, we tested uh, uh, both Oracle and SQL Server, uh, both on-prem and in the cloud to, to, to see if there was any performance difference. Uh, but, but the systems are configured uh, very similarly. I'll get into the results of that in just a minute. And the other, the other purpose of our test was to, was to, was to measure this um, 
performance optimization for the uh, for the ESX for ESXi, which is centered around uh, the way that AMD Epic processors are 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 organized. So we're able to to uh, optimize the scheduler to take advantage of this difference, and that difference is um, was highlighted in this white paper, which we have mentioned here. Um, it was published, uh, like Bob said, a couple years ago. And in that paper, we did we did several workloads, more than just the databases. But uh, we repeated those tests again in the OCBS environment, using those uh, AMD Epic based shapes to uh, to validate that we're still getting that same performance boost in the um, in the cloud environment as well. Well, I think it's pretty powerful that not only do we have you know kind of direct control of the system, and we know that it's going to perform well, but that we've gone back and remeasured this and. So I think that's a, a, a very interesting set of experiments to run and tell us about the results of it. In this first set of results that I'm gonna talk about, this is where we compared the on-prem server versus the uh, server in the cloud in OCVS. And uh, in, in, in both the Oracle case, which is on the left and the SQL server case, which is on the right, we saw essentially the same performance, uh, both on-prem and in the cloud, which is, which is what you would expect. There is, uh, so I'll, I'll address the difference. Uh, there is a, a slight uh, advantage to OCVS in these results. You'll see that in the 8VM case, which is basically a max out uh, performance test, uh, the, the OCVS is a little bit ahead of the on-prem and that's because the OCVS server that we had had slightly better um, storage. The, the NVMe devices in those uh, hosts was a little bit newer kind of basically one generation better. So we got we got a little bit better storage performance and that resulted in, in a little bit of difference. But it's essentially this is the same performance. So this is to assure people that um, if you're currently running um, your, your, your databases right on-prem, you could move them into OCVS on a similar system and you would get similar, similar performance. Uh, and the next set of tests that we did was was about was around the scheduler enhancement. So Again, in the OCVS environment, we uh, uh, we actually uh, disabled the scheduler enhancement. So by, so by default now, starting with 7.02 and later, you automatically get this scheduler enhancement for AMD Epic processors, where we uh, where the, where this, our scheduler is aware of the way that the L3 caches are organized for AMD Epic processors, and we take advantage of that and make more intelligent and efficient scheduling decisions, which leads to a performance boost. Uh, so here we can see that, yeah, we found that we get that same approximately 10% uh, performance increase due to this uh, schedule enhancement for uh, AMD processors. So uh, combining these two things together, uh, like Bob had talked about earlier, you know, OCVS is a great platform for being able to run your enterprise applications like SQL Server or Oracle uh, in the cloud. Well, I think that's pretty powerful to again say, you know, not, not only the performance data, but again, the flexibility here. So for VMware's value prop of being able to take that workload, make it portable, move it to your offering of choice. I mean, this is a great offering that certainly Oracle has invested in, a good investment in the AMD side of the house, just like we've made, you know, with the scheduling enhancement. So that it's great to see, uh, you know, adoption of these other cloud services and grow those cloud services as well too. Yeah, Mark, Mark, I think that's a great point. And, you know, just again, to highlight the fact that the customer has full control migrating from on-prem to in the cloud, truly zero refactoring. These VMs were moved from on-prem to, to the cloud and zero refactoring. Yeah, that's a good that's a good note. So when when we did these tests, we were able I was able to complete all of them in about a week and a half because I had the on-prem VMs already done. I did the on-prem test first and then I just did a cross vCenter vMotion of those VMs over to this environment, uh, spun them up and was able to run through the tests, iterate through the different uh, test cases pretty quickly without making any changes to the the, the actual databases on the VM at all. Well, that's great. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, we look forward to following up with uh, some of the information in the white paper, a lot more detail there, but really glad to see performance highlighted uh, around flexibility here as well. So thanks for joining folks today. Thank nice you. Work. We look forward to seeing you next time on the next edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Thanks.